Hello, world historians. Welcome to day 38. Today we're talking about the Middle Ages in the West. I'm going to go fairly quickly, so please uh, feel free to pause the lecture, get your notes down, then push play and listen to the additional information I have at that point. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, thank you so much for the good that came out of the Middle Ages in the West. Uh, we know that the gospel was shared a lot, beginning from Ireland. And we know it was a difficult time for people. Thank you for those uh, whose faith stayed strong and perhaps influenced our ancestors to get to know Jesus, to sing to him. We love you, Lord. Amen. All right. So we're going to talk about the kingdom of France. And this was the region in Rome known as Gaul. In uh, 496, Clovis brought the gospel. And Clovis was a strong leader who was able to eventually unite the Franks about 15 years after he brought the gospel. The next leader, known as Charles Martel, the Hammer, extended Frank's reign. You'll see that there was some time in between there where there wasn't really a notable leader that we need to learn. But Charles Martel is the next big notable one. And in 732, he was victorious at the Battle of Tours. Uh, securing the kingdom of the Franks, which was the strongest kingdom at the time and included France, part of Germany, um, certainly some settlers who went into Spain, uh, Austria, northern Italy. The son of Charles is named Pepin, Pepin the Short. So that would not be a very fun historical name to go by, but that was his name. And the Pope anointed Pepin king by the grace of God. Pepin, in exchange, promised to fight the Lombards to try to preserve the unity of what was going to become the Holy Roman M Empire. And uh, this began the Carolinian dynasty, which lasted for over 200 years, which is pretty long during the Middle Ages in the West. Now, Pepin's son is Charles the Great. He's the most famous leader during the Middle Ages to remember. If you had to remember one king, remember Charlemagne. In 771, he begins to rule. He expands the Frankish kingdom into an empire. He does spread the gospel. And on Christmas Day in 800 AD, so that's extremely easy to remember and cool, Pope Leo III crowns Charlemagne emperor of the Holy Roman Empire. Now, this was a mixed blessing. Certainly, it's an honor. But by the pope crowning him, the pope is saying that he has power over him to give him a crown. So that was kind of an interesting uh, political move there. Now, Charlemagne did lead a revival of learning and he passed away in 814. And there is his fancy casket. What is Charlemagne's legacy? His son, Louis the Pious, was ineffective at administration. So Louis's three sons then fought over an empire that they were trying to divide. In 843 AD, the Treaty of Verdun they divided the empire into three kingdoms. Lothar was what was going to become Italy. Charles the Bald was going to rule France. And Louis the German was going to rule Germany. So three brothers there. So you can see how a lot of Europe is kind of interrelated. Um, this map is interesting. It kind of shows how uh, the Frankish territory grows. So in 481, this is the area of the Frankish territory and uh, then they gradually make more conquests. You can pause it here and interpret this map. Leadership. So leadership during the Middle Ages, uh, we're gonna go back and look at the popes a little bit. In 590 AD, Gregory I, also known as Gregory the Great, became Pope. And he was the first one to kind of mix up uh, the papacy with politics. So to combine government and faith. And he raised an army also, which was effective and that's certainly standard for government and he repaired roads. He considered himself responsible for Italy all the way to England and from Spain all the way to Germany. And he lived in a palace in Rome. Now we're going to talk about the Vikings because the Vikings uh, are rising during this time. And they're a reason that we end up having feudalism. So let's look at who are the Vikings, where did they come from, and what did they do? So the Viking Age began about 750 A.D., 
And the end of the Viking Age is usually given as 1066 AD, and that's an important year along with 800. That's when William of Normandy 